We leave the ring that night. I think Jamie Sandow went through a table. Our lives changed that night. I knew it. Everybody knew it. And we became fan favorites. And we were booked as heels. Right. Which was fine. So it was the only time I was ever a heel for five years. Was right. Was at the very beginning of the run. So then, fast forward. Next TV tapings. Still have no match. Still selling merchandise at NXT shows. Still not getting booked. It's crazy. And Big Cass is getting booked. Not with me. And getting pushed with other tag team people on live events. And they're not. They're fucking with me. Build them up. Like, not put me in the ring. Booking Cass in a tag team. Making them cut promos with Mason Ryan. Like, trying to pair them. Right. Even though we just did this thing on TV. We do our next set of tapings four weeks later, right? Three weeks later. We go to the tapings. I'm not booked. Cass is not booked. The whole time we're there, the whole crowd at the tapings, in the crowd, we're not booked. Is going, shift, shift. <laughs> this time, they brought Rye back in for the dark segment. At the end of the night, Terry Taylor comes up to us, who I love. Love. One of the best minds for the business in the history of our business. Yep. Ever. Terry Taylor comes up to me and Cass and goes, they want you to do the dark seg now against Ryback. So he comes up with a little stick with us. But what he, he <laughs> so um, we go out there and then it was me and Cass who came up with our stick, but the idea of the physicality was Terry Taylor. So I said, Ryback is feed me more feed me more so why not go out there and get the next what champ I go we're going to the local golden corral how you doing Cass I'm hitting the how you doings Cass is hitting all the things I go you you any of you ladies out here in the arena and this, this is mind you second time that people have ever seen me and Cass right and it's the dark sick okay and we gotta go in the ring of Ryback who's over his shit and getting a huge push at the time and we're heels. So I go out there. If any of you ladies are out there into meatheads in that ring, <laughs> got a real cheap date for you. All you got to do is take them over to Logo Golden Corral. <laughs> right? right? Cass go. I go, Cass, what are we getting right back at the Golden Corral? He goes, what do you say tacos? How you doing? We go through everything on the menu. Chocolate fondue. How you doing? Cheeseburger. How you doing? <laughs> Hamburger. How you doing? Swiss cheese. How you doing? Every cheese. And the whole crowd picks up on it by the third or fourth, how you doing? And Cass is trying to stop, but I tell him to keep going. I keep giving him, like, keep going, keep right. going. Just keep going, bro. They're going. And then finally he gets down to the last thing, which is we ain't going to give you a hard taco. We're going to give you an S-A-W-F-T soft taco because that's what you are, you know? Then Ryback got into a thing. He's like, you know. He says, uh, you know who, uh, your mother and father, who are brother and sister, who made, did a terrible job and they made you idiot brothers or whatever. Right. And I was like, huge mistake. Don't talk about our family. Cass, you hit him high. I'll hit him low on the count of three. That was the Terry Taylor shtick, old school wrestling yep. shit. Like, <laughs> here we go. One, two, three. Cass runs at him and gets his head taken off. And I'm just standing there and I go, whoa, you knocked his block off, bro. Listen, I didn't mean anything that I just said. I was just joking around. When you say me and you go out, we get out of here, we go to the local Golden Corral. He picks me up, scoops me, hits me with his deal. The next time we're out there on TV, I stay a certified G bona fide stud thing and you can't teach that on the taping. A few people uh, that were out there, like, you could tell when I said you can't teach that and I did this with my arm, they did it too. And then the Ryan Ward came back, the writer, and was like, bro, you have to say this every night that we put you out there. And here I am with a guy full of this. Wow. And I'm like, dude, and we're limited on how much time we get on the microphone and it feeds into our match. And the biggest thing that I got heat with in the business wasn't even real, bro. I promise you, I pretty much stuck to my times. Yep. But the biggest thing was that they were worried that I was going to go over time. Always, 
We give you this mic. And you got two minutes. You go over. They were counting by the second. You went four seconds over. You went five seconds over. And they were doing that to you in NXT for a reason. Right. For the big time. For the big time. Yeah. And they worked like the tapings, like they had commercial breaks in between. So you'd be in a hold and they'd treat it like there was a commercial going on, but really you wouldn't, you know. And I just think that when I got thrown into the fire, nothing could have prepared me for it. Bro, the first time me and Cash went out there, dude, we said soft. The second time we say, how you doing? And I had no idea what happened after that. Just, because I was getting threatened to be fired. I was being told I was no good. I was, I was, I was having matches and we were being booked like we were getting jobbed right. out every taping. We never won a match. And I was being told I wasn't ready and this and that. And, blah, blah, blah. and you just hit place with your psyche. And you just don't know. And I'm just like anybody else at that time in that stature of my career. Just trying to make.